Number five, come on. No. Come on, come on. We've been here for about 18 years working with sled dogs. And this has been our back door for all that time. Not for everybody, sled dog life. For us, it was, I found it was good fun. The dogs are exactly what it's all been about. There have been a lot of special dogs. For Alan and Fiona Stewart, running sled dogs in the wildness of the Cairngorm Mountains is a passion, a calling. This Arctic sport isn't just about racing, it's a way of life. As you can see over the years, um, sled dogs have been a massive part of our life and uh, this here is uh, in Argentina, a place called Ushuaia in Patagonia. And of course, this is Diderot. Happy memories, but hard work, a lot of hard work. Alan has raced all over the world, taking his dogs to the frozen extremes. They've been my income, plus also they're all very, very much my best mates. Aren't you, darling? Yes, you are. This is Harley, and him and his twin brother are one of my best wheel dogs. I have a black team, a red team, and a blue team, and the black team are the best of the best. And these guys have never left the black team. They're serious, serious sled dogs. Five years ago, it was possible to take his dogs all the way over the Cairngorms. In this place and at this altitude and at this time of year, normally you should see deep snow and deep snow which has been on this ground for months. It's not happening. And according to some meteorological forecasts, they're saying that in as soon as 10 years time, you could see a whole winter pass with no snow anywhere on the Cairngorm Plateau. Well, if this was a normal winter, say five years ago, you would not get on the car park. They would not have enough car parking spaces for the numbers of people who came skiing. So, you, you know, you can imagine, you can, you can see all the gaps there today and there's a little 100 metre ski slope that's created by artificial snow. So the world has changed. You know, we would have been coming up here, you'd have been coming through drifts that went over the road above the height of your car. What are you seeing that's changing in terms of the pattern of species? Uh, well, on lower ground, I mean, because it was a new reserve when I came in 1976, we spent 10 years monitoring birds in different types of pine wood. Come up onto here, I mean, we're getting into the, the really specialist birds. We've got ptarmigan all around us here. And what colour are they at this time of year? They're white. They change colour to match the snow cover that we would get on the mountain. So a white ptarmigan, in order to remain in a live ptarmigan has to be pu pushed right back up the top of the mountain, right? And they're starting to find that. I think in Scandinavia, where this has been going on as well, they're actually finding that ptarmigan are moving up. And I think there's some indication that one or two are now not changing all the white feathers because they're realising to survive, not be predated, they're going to have to start to live in this mixed habitat. It may look wintry and feel crisp enough, but what we're witnessing here is a disaster. 70% of people have no idea about climate change. They all walk around in the winter as if it's summer. Over the past 20 years, Alan has taken clients on training runs, but now his business is suffering. It's uh, the thawing that gets me here. The weather can change crazy weather, up and down, up and down, and the ground never gets a chance to dry. They all looked very winterish here, but the truth is the ground was so soft at the beginning. And everything, you can't run dogs through this at all. It's just all, this is, and it's, it's, it's melting so fast now in the last couple of hours. It's seriously, and it's just going to go into the ground and make it liquid again. But that's never had a chance to freeze, or it's just and that's what 80% 80, 80 of the trails are like this. Alan's huskies work best in very cold temperatures, but now it's simply getting too warm. 
Back when we started, our season was about seven months a year. Now it's three. It's the weather that's killed us. It's definitely the weather. There won't be anybody, there will not be a commercial side to the sled dog scene now. We just draw the line under that. But we knew we were going to do this about five, six years ago because we saw the climate changing for our training programme. That was absolutely the push, the climate change. Oh, definitely. Couldn't hold it back. No, and we knew through mates of mine in even Canada and Alaska, and my son racing at the highest level, he make a living at sled dog racing in Canada and Alaska. He was starting to say, and question, really. In Canada? Uh huh. So yeah. if you're questioning Canada, yeah. and you're it, questioning in the Ken Gorms, Yeah, right? totally, Natalie. Well, I've got a lot of thank yous to do. Um, uh, all my dogs, uh, they couldn't come tonight. They wouldn't want them. <laughs> Alan organised an event with his close friends, including the Arctic explorer Borg Ausland, to say farewell to the Cairngorms Sled Dog Centre. I've been up in the Arctic since the early 90s, and there's a huge, huge difference when it comes to the sea ice, both the thickness and also the um, kind of the, the coverage. It's been reduced by 30 to 40 percent since the 1990, and I see it because the ice is a lot thinner. So what I ski on now is much more fragile than compared to what I skied in, uh, yeah, on the, on the, in the early days when I did my trips to the North Pole. In the UK, the days of running sled dogs are sliding into history. 18 years, 19 Christmases here. It's been quite a special way of life with dogs. There's a lot of sad times coming. I can't do any more. But it's, it's, there's been a lot of good times. <laughs>